Hi everyone, uh, it's Monica Moore, and today on um, our edition of Ask Monica, we're going to talk about uh, the vaginal oocyte retrieval, which is the process by which we are able to extract or obtain the eggs needed um, to be fertilized in an IVF cycle. So, uh, as usual, I have visual aids. Um, I do have help with drawing today. Um, but first, before we can really talk about the retrieval, we need to talk about what the differences between a follicle and an egg. We often use those terms interchangeably, but they are a little bit different, and it's important to know for this. So, um, if we look at the screen here, let's see if I can get this without the light. Okay. So, a follicle is a fluid-filled sac that holds an egg. And as an egg matures, the follicular fluid increases in the amount, which increases the diameter of the follicle. So eggs are microscopic. We can't see them uh, by ultrasound, we can't see them with the naked eye. So by measuring the diameter of this follicle, we are indirectly measuring the maturity of the egg. So in order to obtain this follicle, we have to puncture, excuse me, this egg. We have to puncture the follicle, which we do with a needle. The follicular fluid will um, disappear so that it kind of collapses like this. And then what's left is the egg. And then the egg will go out through the needle to be fertilized with sperm in a Petri dish. I'm not even gonna try to draw a sperm, but this is the Petri dish, here's the egg. Okay, so what we're doing is we are puncturing follicles in order to obtain the egg that's inside of them to put them into the Petri dish to be fertilized by sperm. How do we do that? This, I have to show you a picture of because there's no way I'm being able to draw this for you guys. Okay, so what happens is the um, vaginal ultrasound probe goes in through the vagina, just like it does when you have vaginal ultrasounds done. The um, needle, there's a needle attached to the end of it which goes through the vaginal walls. Um, you can see right here the vaginal wall, here's the needle. And it goes into the ovary and it, and it goes in a couple times to puncture follicles. As this follicle is punctured, this egg goes out and goes through um, here into kind of a tube. Then it goes collected into a syringe, um, which then is taken to the embryology lab where it's put onto into that Petri dish. So we go on this side, we puncture every single follicle that we can, and then we go on this side and we puncture every single follicle that we can on this side. So because we're going in vaginally and we're doing multiple punctures, that can hurt, that can cause pain. Um, and that's why we always want you to be under anesthesia when you have this procedure done. We don't want you to be in pain. We don't want you to be flinching or moving so that we can be kind of very direct and deliberate when we go in with the needle. Because we're going through the vaginal walls, there's no scars really. We're not going in, you won't ever, no one will be able to see that you had this done. But afterwards, where in the vagina where their multiple puncture wounds were, of course you can imagine that that might cause some soreness and a little bit of spotting, but most people feel pretty good after the retrieval. Um, then um, as these, after these follicles are punctured, they fill with blood and they feel, fill with healing substances, which can cause the ovary to actually be a little bit bigger here as it heals. And that is why people can feel a lot of discomfort right after the retrieval, particularly three or four days after the retrieval is when it's at its peak for people. So um, the healing process can cause some discomfort as the ovary kind of heals itself. Um, but most people do uh, really well with that. And um, when you wake up from anesthesia, not only do you not feel this process, but you kind of really don't remember it for a little bit of time afterwards. So hope that helps. Um, because you're having anesthesia, I should mention that we would want you to have nothing to eat or drink um, from midnight the night before or the morning of the retrieval. Um, we, you can brush your teeth uh, for the minimum amount of fluid that you swallow, um, but really in terms of safety for anesthesia, we do ask that you're what we call NPO or nothing to eat or drink after midnight the night before the retrieval and that morning. So hope this is helpful. Good to see everyone. Have a great rest of your day.